So Dr. Monica Gandhi, welcome back to the Grapevine Health YouTube channel. It's so uh, nice to be able to, to grab you for a few minutes. Thank you. Um, so I see you've been, you've been talking a lot and educating folks about this Delta variant. What do we need to know about the Delta variant? Yeah, you know, the way I think of any, actually any variant, including Delta, is three components. Is it more transmissible? Is it more virulent? And can it evade the immune system? And what is what do we mean by, <laughs> is it more virulent? Yeah, virulent means will it cause more severe disease in those mm -hmm. who are unvaccinated, otherwise, uh, even or those who are vaccinated who got a breakthrough infection, for example. So that's what I mean by virulent. Mm -hmm. And of those three components, um, I think it is more transmissible, just like that alpha variant was, because it is becoming the dominant strain in places that are opening up more. We have about 20% of our strains being the Delta variant. So it becomes the most fit. So if anyone, if it's gonna find, if any you know, virus is gonna find people are unvaccinated, it's gonna be this one. So when you say it's more fit, it, it means that it's more capable of spreading and causing disease. Yeah, I mean, when I think of any organism, like humans too, evolutionarily, the purpose is to make more copies of, of, of organisms, viruses, animals, that's what evolution is. And so it is the one that is able to make more copies of itself, mm -hmm. probably binds more tightly to our cells in our nose. And then um, it's the one that gets in. If there's a Delta variant plus a Alpha variant in there, it's the one that gets in. And then it's the one that replicates and gets to the next person if it transmits. So that's what more fit means. So I think, yes, you're right. It's more fit. It's more transmissible in that way. It's the one that's going to make itself be replicated. But I really, really carefully I'm looking at it and so are a lot of other people and see no evidence that it causes more morbidity, making, making, meaning making you more sick than mm -hmm. an old strain would. Mm -hmm. And also very convinced absolutely with every fiber of my being that our vaccine, it's not gonna break through our vaccines. Yeah, even the Johnson & Johnson, right? I know there are even a lot the of Johnson questions, yeah. Yeah, it's a great question because people are, actually I've seen that like there's a support group forming that the Johnson & Johnson oh. recipients feel that they didn't get a superior product. Again, see no evidence of that. I and mean, let's go back to the virulence. Let's actually stay on that for a minute. Really to just, to put it most cleanly, um, all of these vaccines, most of them, there's three others out there that we don't have in this country that are the whole virus, but all of them involve, the other ones involve the spike protein, Johnson & Johnson, all the mRNA vaccines, that's that protein that, that gets the virus to, to um, connect with the cell. And you can have 13 mutations along the spike protein, which actually the Delta variant does. But the way that the immune system works is that it lines up about 100 T cells across that spike protein. So you lose 13 pieces of your spike protein because of a mutation, you still have 100 T cells that are lined up ready to fight um, the virus if it sees it again after vaccines, including Johnson & Johnson. So, so basically what you're saying, I think the, the take home message for people is if you're vaccinated, you don't really have to worry about the Delta variant. You I really think that's don't. the bottom line. People want to know if I got the J&J &J vaccine or any other vaccine, do I have to worry? And I think the people who have to worry are people who haven't been vaccinated, but it's the same concern we've had all along for people yes. who are not vaccinated that you're vulnerable or you are susceptible to getting COVID-19. Yeah, that's a great point. I mean, actually, there was a really great analysis the other day that shows anyone who's still going in the hospital these days with COVID um, are those who are unvaccinated, whether it be mm -hmm. Delta, whether it be Alpha, whether it be the ancestral strain. It, it really doesn't matter. Like you just said, if you're vaccinated, you should really not be worrying. And if you're unvaccinated, hopefully we can work and talk to you about um, reasons we think it's a good idea to get vaccinated. Yeah, and, and why do you think we're so obsessed with talking about these different mutations, particularly if they're not making people sicker and they're not killing people? Sure, maybe you can, you can pass the virus on easier to someone else, but is this just something sensational to keep talking about or what do you think's going on here? 
I actually think it is something sensational. So you and I, as ID doctors, um, we see a lot of mutations in the HIV virus uh, because the HIV virus is very clever and it tries to get a mutation to um, go against our medications. And so we know that there's a mutation, K103N, but the public doesn't know that because um, you can manage it. You just, you manage that mutation and you know what to do. And I keep on thinking, why does the poor public have to be like told about every mutation in the spike protein if, like you said, it really doesn't make a difference in terms of uh, making you more sick, which it doesn't, no evidence of that, and that it can't evade the vaccines. So I think it's sort of sensational, actually. And I, the reason it makes me worried about um, how we're doing is actually we're doing really well in this country, meaning those lower cases, those lower hospitalizations, those lower deaths, vaccines work. Any place that's rolling out vaccine is beginning to get back to a sense of normalcy. It is, a, it is amazing miracle of modern science, these uh, vaccines. So I feel like it detracts from the message of the effectiveness of the vaccines. Yeah. So what's your prediction for the fall? So two predictions. One, are we going to see another surge? And number two, are we going to need boosters? These are the questions people keep asking me. I'll say my answers, but I want to know what you think. <laughs> I think we are not going to see another surge at all. We may see small outbreaks in um, areas where there are more people that are still concerned about the vaccines are still not yet ready to get the vaccine. And I hope we can work like, like um, forums like what you're doing is to help educate people compassionately about why the getting the vaccine is really safe and effective. But we're not going to see surges in this country because we have enough immunity, I believe, that we're not going to see a surge. Mm -hmm. um, and then the second is this booster issue. Even the CDC finally did come out this week and say, okay, I don't think we're gonna need boosters for a while. And I'm glad because they're the most conservative organization. They're the ones who are always saying it last, to be honest. Um, but it's, it's, it's really about the T cells last a long time. You get great T cell responses from these um, vaccines. And what do and then, T cells do? Remind people what T cells do. Yeah, I mean, there's actually two arms of the immune system. B cells make antibodies. We keep on hearing about antibodies. It seems like mm -hmm. it's the thing people discuss. But really T cell immunity is the main way we fight viruses. We all learn this immunology 101 in medical school and T cells last a long time. T cells are cells that hide out in your body. They're called memory T cells and they will come out if they see that virus again and attack that virus. And because there's so many of them against the virus, so many of them, even across the spike protein, they, we, they can fight the variant. The one B cell paper, though, I have to tell you about. Just this is I can't. This paper made me very happy. So this B as cell long as paper, you tell me in plain English, I will. Okay. So there is a paper that came out from uh, Oregon Health Sciences just this week, and what it said is, what do memory B cells do? Okay. So what the B cells do are they're the ones that are producing your antibodies that you hear about, and they, those antibodies they go away in your bloodstream. They have to. If you kept every antibody to every infection you've seen since you were zero. You're, you wouldn't be able to move your, your, your blood would be so, so thick. thick. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's been full of protein. So the antibodies do actually wane, but then the parents, the, the, the ones that can produce those antibodies when needed are called memory B cells and they go and hang out in your body and they come out when they're needed and produce those antibodies. They hang out in your bone marrow, they hang out in your lymph nodes, but they're there. And actually we have a couple of good papers that show that they're really there. Uh, after vaccination. So what happened from this Oregon science paper is that they exposed memory B cells to different variants and they happily produced antibodies that just worked against those variants. They didn't, they didn't produce old antibodies against an old ancestral strain. They produced antibodies to the virus that they see in front of them. And so if they see a variant in the future, even the antibodies, let alone the T cells, will be targeted to that variant. Because it looks so much like the original one, right? They're I think not that, different viruses, yeah. right? This is it's, what I think confuses yeah. people when we keep talking about these variants. It's still SARS-CoV-2, the original coronavirus. It's just that these mutations, and that's what viruses do. We, yeah. we forget to talk about that. Viruses yeah. copy themselves and they make mistakes and that's all the mutation is. And so I think we forget to remind people 
you know, when we're talking about, oh, this variant, oh, it's going to be dominant by such and such a date. And ultimately, it's still the same coronavirus. It's it the same that, coronavirus. That's exactly the point. In it. Yeah. 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 I think that's a great way to put it. Yeah. So um, the, the last thing I want to talk about is um, kids going back to school. Where are you on this? So, you know, I have, I have seen kind of as an HIV doctor, maybe thinking more holistically that the kids being out of school has not been good for mental health. I think the simplest thing someone said to me is kids need kids. So, um, mm. so it hasn't been a great thing that, that, that this country more than uh, the UK or Europe closed their schools and you want everyone to be safe. And the teachers will be vaccinated, um, I hope, in very high numbers. They already uh, are, many are. And kids themselves are less likely to get the coronavirus, whether it be Delta, whether it be the ancestral strain. It has to do with how we take in the virus and they just have less receptors in their nose to take in the virus, the little kids. So they're the ones who won't be vaccinated yet because we don't have those vaccine trials yet uh, done in the little kids, but they're less likely to get the virus the teachers are safe and vaccinated. And I think that school should be open in the fall and Delta variant has nothing to do with it like we just talked about. So I hope that um, I hope that schools, many commitments have been made across the country. I hope schools will be open in the fall and it's safe. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, I, I wanna keep these short because I know people don't have a long attention span. And so we wanna have you back though, over and over again. Every Anytime. Time, so just to have, <laughs> you know, quick conversations about some of these hot topics. So thank you so much, Dr. Thank you. Thank and we'll, you. we'll see you in a couple weeks. See you soon.